It's one thing to skip voluntary OTAs, but when a player is a holdout for mandatory minicamp, that player means business. Daniel Hunter, according to Tom Pelissero, is doing just that. And a player of his caliber, I would do the same thing if I were him. You're not going to, you really expect me to settle for just $5 million this year? Please, sorry. Thank you for pulling the future funds to help me out last season, 2022. But that was a band-aid. That was then. This is now. And ideally, as a fan, when by the time mandatory minicamp comes around, I would like it if the team had all distractions resolved. But here we are. Dalvin Cook, why? A running back on a bad contract. You were never going to trade him. You knew he was eventually going to get released. However, Daniel Hunter, if you're the Vikings front office, take as much time as you need because the interest is there. Why? Reportedly, they have received calls on Hunter. And at the same time, the Vikings always have the option to simply give him a pay bump for this year and possibly an extension for beyond. According to Over the Cap, Minnesota has around $18 million in cap available. So the Vikings, they have all the leverage. The two parties have not been able to see eye to eye on a new contract. So it at least shows that the Vikings do have interest in retaining him. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN, he says, after talking to a few team sources, Hunter would have real trade value, might take a second round pick and more to pry. Don't call me talking about a second unless a first comes with it as well. But as much as I would like to see the team focused on purely football by the time that mandatory minicamp comes around with this Hunter situation, hopefully it gets resolved by training camp. But I want to do an exercise real quick as far as teams that may be, inter or may be interested is not the right phrase I should use because, of course, a ton of teams will be interested in the services of the Neil Hunter. But as far as teams that could realistically make a play for him so teams that have the cash and the draft capital as far as the cash Daniel Hunter last year 2022 he made 20 million dollars the year before that 2021 13 million dollars so I don't know what he's looking for ballpark figure per year but if you just take those two numbers and take the average of it 16 and a half million dollars what teams could realistically be in play here Honorable mention here, the Arizona Cardinals, they do have $27 million in cap, as well as two first-round picks, one of them from Houston. But I say honorable mention because they're going through a complete rebuild. Kyler Murray, who knows how long he's going to be out for, and they very well could be looking at the quarterback position in next year's draft. But I want to start with the Indianapolis Colts. They have $23 million available. You could pair Daniel Hunter with Quiddy Pay. Try to stack up your defense as best as you can for when Anthony Richardson inevitably steps onto the field. A quarterback on a rookie contract, this is the time to go nuts with the spending. Now then, I know a general rule of thumb is don't do divisional trades. First off, Quasi Dafamensa, he proved that he's not against that at all in the 2022 draft, both with the Lions and the Green Bay Packers. But the Lions, they do have $24 million available in cap, and they do have a need at edge rusher. I wouldn't be opposed to that. But the team that I'm going to say makes the most sense, in my humble opinion, is the Chicago Bears. They have $32.5 million available, and they have two first-round picks, one of them from Carolina. But to me, the reason why Chicago makes the most sense is they believe in Justin Fields. So much so that they traded down from the number one overall pick to help boost up the rest of the roster, getting DJ Moore in the process. It's going to be a big year ahead for their third year man out of Ohio State, and I'm sure they expect to be competitive. I don't believe in Justin Fields at all, but it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what they believe, and if they believe they're going to take a big step forward and be competitive next season, why would you not want to add Daniel Hunter to the mix as well? A first, your own first round pick, Chicago, and a third or fourth, whatever, in exchange for the services of Daniel Hunter or Carolina's first round pick straight up for Hunter. What say you? Type in your thoughts in the comments section below. And now it's comments time. We're back to that again. Jarrett Preble says, I don't have a ton of confidence in Quazy. I don't know what took so long to release Cook. We'll see how he handles Hunter. I get why you're annoyed, Jarrett, with the Dalvin Cook situation, how that was handled. I was as well. 
but I'm with you on the back half of that comment. The Daniil Hunter situation, how this gets resolved, I'm going to be paying attention very closely. You either pay him what he's worth, or if you do trade him, you better get a first round pick. Dude, if you settle for a third or even worse, then it's like, all right, bro, what are we doing here? Kristoff says, I totally agree on Dalvin Cook. It was fun with him, but his prime days are past. Unfortunately, but I disagree on Hunter. Let's give him a competitive contract. They can still trade him next year if he manages to stay healthy. Why not? We've had Daniil Hunter either be a holdout or have some sort of contract issue for what, the last four years? What's another year added to that? Why not make it five? I'm not being sarcastic either. If you want to do another kick the can down the road type of contract another year or at least give them a pay bump and then another dummy year in 2024 to go through this all over again who cares and if he plays well he becomes even more valuable lastly lw1007 says i feel like quasi is making the best of what he can do with contracts that spielman put in motion yeah exactly in fact adam thielen for example if i'm not mistaken had the Vikings done nothing with his contract, Thielen was set to make around $19 million. Bad contract. Dalvin Cook, if you were able to find a trade partner for him before you inevitably released him, the team acquiring Cook would also acquire an $11 million cap hit. Also a bad contract. Quazy, I get on him time and time again for that 2022 draft, the trades he made, especially in the first round with the Lions. That aside, we also have to give him time to clean up the mess that Spielman made.